Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to work on a project where we're going to take some battery monitoring equipment here and instead of putting it inside of a battery pack, we're actually going to keep it external. We're going to design some cases for them, but let's go over the electronics real quick. Down here we have a kilometer, which will give us uh, amperage, watt hours, draw, um, and all that stuff. And I'll use this uh, electronic shunt here to track those things. And then this is the BMS. Uh, it's a 4S and I have a particular reason to use a 4S that we'll see at the end of the video and why these can be useful. So now we're going to go to the computer, design a couple cases for these, print them out, and then do a little bit of review of the assembly. And here we go. All right, let's design the case. Uh, we're going to start with the kilometer or the battery monitor and trying to keep this super simple. This doesn't need to be fancy. So we're going to start out at the base. We're going to create a little brick to hold the system, the board. It's a little elevated off the platform. Um, and we're just going to round some corners, add some dimensions and the walls, add some supports for the case top to uh, put the thing on, round some more corners. Then we're going to probably put some supports here. This will be where we mount the XT60 connectors, both in and out, so we can have a path. Make it a little wider for support, some changes, some specs here or there, rounding some corners. Then we get to the top part, the case cover. And so we have some countersink screw holes, um, M4s, and then a window that the monitor part will connect to. And so we're going to print that out. And let's go look at the 4S BMS enclosure, very similar in style, a um, little different. The, the board's just going to nestle inside these supports here. And then we have the XT60 connectors, the same as the other model, but we added this port here, and this will be for the um, battery leads to do our monitoring. And I'll show you that when we have this printed out and assembled. So let's go back to the workbench. All right, we got the case printed here for the kilometer or the battery display monitor. We'll power it up here in a second and I'll show you some of the uses. But here's the internals. We've got the board mounted there in the middle. No need for screws. The way this is designed um, is pretty solid in there. That bottom wire is the positive wire that bridges between the two XT60 connectors, the input side and then the output side. And then we have a tap wire that comes off of that and goes into the circuit board. So it gets its power from that top section, which is the ground wire. This breaks on the ground and the positive is straight through. And that's how it keeps track of all the measurements of the voltage and amperage and watt hours and all that kind of stuff. So let's put this back together and we'll hook it up and see what we can do with it. We've got everything hooked up now. Now this meter can measure a percentage of the battery but that will require you resetting the value for every different battery you have. If you have this plugged up on a wall um, and as part of a bigger circuit and you don't care about it being dynamic, sure, set it to the amp hours or use it to measure the amp hours that are in a battery and then you're good. I don't use it that often for different things like for that application, but I have stuff like this as an RC battery um, that I might want to use to power things. and. What's useful about it? Well, it does give me voltage. So right now this pack is at 15.48. And uh, if you do set those values for the amp hours, you can actually use it to amount how much of the battery is left. But I think one of the uses I like to use it for, especially on the DC side, is to know what something is drawing. So right now I have it hooked up to this fan. And so now I know this fan is drawing six watts at half an amp. That's useful information if I wanted to calculate how long the battery should last and whether the information like that. So that's what I kind of use this for is I just throw it in a circuit real quick, figure out the load. But I also feel like I could just put this in a bigger circuit that uh, I want to keep track of the battery usage of a, of a battery bank and good to go. So in this scenario here, we have this battery powering the fan, but this battery is still unprotected. So let's move on to the other um, enclosure and talk about the 4S BMS that we have wrapped up in it. We'll be right to that. 
All right, let's finish up with the BMS. What we got here, obviously, is the RC battery we used in our previous test, showing off the coal meter. And this is the reason I went with a 4S BMS in this enclosure, is because this is what I'd use most likely for this application, and I'm sure I could find some others. But these are not um, int integrally safe. Um, they put out high output, but there's nothing to prevent the batteries from depleting to zero. And I accidentally did this once by actually using this fan and I left it on overnight and killed the battery. When I went to recharge it, one of the cells wouldn't come back, so it completely ruined the pack. So that's why I kind of decided to do this. So the BMS is in here, the battery leads go through there, and we have an extension ribbon that we use to balance the battery. So in this scenario, if I was to leave this on till the battery is um, at its lowest voltage, which the BMS should cut it off at 2.7 to 3 volts, the battery is safe. It will auto cut off. Um, and so that's the whole point of this system here is that the battery is now protected and it's external. So I wouldn't have to put this in here. I just put it in the circuit with the battery. And so that's what we got here. Let's just make sure everything's working. So now it's drawing the proper load. And like I said, when these get depleted to three volts, they'll also shut down. The other advantage of this is charging. If you don't have a charger that most RC people use, which is like this one, you can just send um, 16 you know, volts or so, whatever the max capacity is, through here, and the BMS will handle that as well. It uh, will cut off once the cells are at full capacity, and again, protecting the battery so it doesn't overcharge and so, so forth. There's also the protection of overdrawing. If you draw too much current, the BMS also will cut that off. If you send too much, they'll also cut it off. So overall, this battery is now protected externally. This wraps up the video, and I uh, hope to see you next time. Thanks.